Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course. As you can see from the title of this video, I have a few different topics that I want to discuss, starting out with Kiki's uncle. Um, it looks like he has reflected on his live that he did. And also for me, Stormy's Instagram Live, it explains a lot about season seven that I noticed. And Chris does call out Martell in tomorrow's upcoming episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. So now before we get into these topics, of course, you know what I'm going to ask. I kindly ask that you please hit the like button on this video. Even if you were to hit the dislike button, either one of those stimulate the video, if you will, meaning that YouTube will recommend it to more people who enjoy discussing various topics surrounding love and marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to show Style and Spirit. I would definitely love to have you. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed for criticism. Okay, so we have up first Kiki's Uncle Ellis. He is on her mother's side, Miss Constance. And um, I know that you all heard the um, his Instagram or his live video. Shout out to Prosperity Thick Girl, Empress. Carmel Rell and the countless others who have covered this. I wanted to play a snippet of his video and then I'm going to uh, read his post where he was reflecting on his video and I'll come back with my commentary. because of the wonderful, thorough content creators who played his live of, you know, he disinvited Wanda and Tisha and Marcel from Kinky's uh, service. So he did reflect and he says, in retrospect, I spoke out of frustration. I do not apologize for allowing my true feelings to be known. We have Monday to celebrate Kiki, and then we can get on with our perspective lives as the strangers we are to never cross paths again. We are not going to tarnish her memory with foolishness. So um, this is so difficult and sad. I, I feel like um, his life, it definitely... Um, kind of turn the tables for me. And when the neighborhood talk picked up the story that Prosperity Thick Girl as Kiki's friend was able to shed light on in terms of her passing, um, people in the comments, they had their opinions about what happened in the garage, in the car, and the carbon monoxide poisoning. They had their opinions about about what that is a um, 
common it it being a common type of of something and so it, it's very difficult for me because whenever I think of someone being in pain and, and hurting, I just feel like this world, all of us who are still living, what can we do to make it more kind and more warm? It's funny because it's like, I feel like the society that we're in, people gravitate towards um, bullying or, you know, roasting and, you know, someone being told off, you know, people, they gravitate towards that energy because they find it entertaining. And things that are more positive or complimentary to people, people may call that boring or stupid or lame. So it's very, very strange, the world that we live in. You know, it's like the weak things of this world, people make them strong. And the strong things of this world, people make them weak, you know? And all I can say to anyone is just be yourself no matter what, regardless of how people look at you or what they say about you, or if they're trying to penetrate your mind and try to make you feel insecure, just be yourself. That's all you can do. And you can't live up to other people's expectations. Like Audre Lorde said, I have to live myself. I used to know it by heart. I have to be myself, live for myself. Otherwise, I'll be crushed into other people's fantasies. And that is exactly right. But every day I think of Kiki and I just wish whatever happened between late Monday night and the wee hours of Tuesday morning just did not happen. I wish there was something that intercepted everything that went down in the, in the garage. But um, to Uncle Ellis, I'm glad that he does not apologize for allowing his true feelings to be known. It was out of love, his love for his niece. Audrey Lord said, I have to define myself for myself. Otherwise, I'll be crushed in other people's fantasies. That was the word I was looking for, define. But um, I'm glad that Uncle Ellis, he said what he had to say. I'm hoping that Marceau, Tisha, and Wanda will respect the, the Dawson's family's boundaries. And they can just memorialize Kiki at their own house. Or they can go to a park and do an additional balloon release in addition to what her high school is doing. Or they can release a dove, you know, over a lake somewhere. Like they can just do their own memorial for her. I hope that they respect that boundary. So then um, I want to play this short snippet of Stormy's Live. I know that you all have heard it too. Shout out to all of the wonderful content creators. I saw it first on Diana Rose's channel and Milishan and What's Happening and, and others. And um, I want to give my thoughts on this because this explains so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this sound bite and then I will come back with my commentary. Oh, I just came on here to see what I was doing for the And just to um, talk about like life and like how short it is. Um, so crazy how like you see how stuff happens and moves so fast and in hindsight it's all these like emotions of like what else so I just came on here to give like a little 4th of July message and say always leave somebody that you care for with the emotions that you want to have and the experience 
experiences and the memories that you want to have with them forever because you never know, you know, when you won't have the opportunity to treat somebody how you wanted to. So I'm always one of the people I always be like, I don't hold no grudges. I move on fast. And I think it was because, you know, I kind of was taught to like always leave something the way you want it to be like how you comfortable with something ending so i don't know if y'all watch love and marriage huntsville but i was on that show and i had moments but then i get over it and then i be moved on to something else and you would never even know like i had an issue with somebody and it was always because i moved with that kind of mindset so we just lost somebody um who I thought was amazing, and I just wanted to get a message. I ain't really, I really don't go live, but I was like, I just wanted to say something because it's so sad. It's still kind of bothering me, and it's so much I I haven't said, but I, I really feel a type of way. Somebody, um. Uh, I don't know if I can say what I want to say right now. I need my other phone so I can text and ask. Can I say what I want to say? Because y'all ask the question. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, you said you was on the show. Yeah. Uh, I can't really say what I want to say right now because this ain't how I plan to say it. Uh, I hate, I don't know why I went live because I'm, I want to say a lot, but now I'm like, maybe I should say nothing. Um, thank y'all. Uh, if it is or was, I will share it in my own way. Not today. Um, and you'll see more later. If you are having reservations, then just sit on it and don't say anything for right now. Thank you. Yeah, my hair is it doesn't grow back, child. Well, it ain't grew all the way back. But Okay, once she started talking about how she puts like body glaze in her hair, that's just where I stopped the snippet. But everyone has talked about how Stormy was talking in past tense. You know, she was saying, you know, when I was on that show, you know, I did or I had. So I am convinced that she is moving on from the show. I have a feeling that she must have... Um, given her time or, you know, to Carlos Kingdom Reign, perhaps even like early, early this year or late last year, she must have said season seven will be my last season because I've made a couple of videos saying that season seven, what, I, what it was, I didn't think she was leaving. I thought they were trying to make her the nucleus of the show because, um, they were hardly showing Melody and Melody was not promoting the show. And then Stormy, she's in the majority of the scenes for all of the episodes thus far. She's the person that kind of like meets up with someone who's at odds with someone else. And she tries to get them to maybe talk it out, hear their side. In her confessional, she's showing empathy. And then so I'm thinking, like, are they trying to make her the nucleus of the show, the center of the show? But if she's leaving and Carlos and production knew ahead of time that season seven was her last season, they are giving her all this camera time as a send off on her way out. And then they want her last season on the show to be as positive as, as possible. That would explain a lot. And then as I was reflecting on this late last night and throughout the day, I was like, well, because I was trying to connect it to, to Melody 
And I think that, you know, as far as like Melody not promoting the show, that entire time I was thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're being mean to Melody. They're editing her out of scenes and they're adding Stormy in. But see, now I'm guessing if, if Melody is irritated at all with production, it's probably because Martel is still filming, moving like everything's normal, although he was arrested, charged and convicted. You know, and he is still, he still has like full filming privileges. That would annoy me as well if I was Melody. I wouldn't promote the show either if I was Melody. I'd be just as annoyed. But I thought it was a combination of things, including, you know, so much footage with Stormy. But her being filmed so much and getting so much screen time and then, you know, almost like this nucleus or mother of the group. I believe it's because it's her last season and they want to send her off to her liking. That explains a lot for me. So I wanted to talk about, you know, the thoughts that I had after I watched her IG live. So then, and one of the upcoming clips that we see for tomorrow's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, we see, of course, where um, Chris is showing Moses and Sonny some properties. I guess we're going to see how Martel fits into all of this. He must wanted to film this scene, perhaps calling himself advocating for destiny. But he actually ends up saying something that Chris Fletcher catches and he calls Martel out on it. And I think that it's great. So I'm going to go ahead and play this soundbite and then come back with my commentary. Her emotions about the situation. Yeah. Do, you, do you blame her? I don't blame her for having emotions, yeah. but yeah. disrespect is a different thing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't sneaking around with this man while they were dating. I'm I ain't mad at how she's feeling. Yeah. But she fumbled the ball. You know, she was doing her. She wasn't paying attention to me. You know, just a lot, you know? So I, I guess I can put a lot, lot more respect on it. You know, it's not like you was trying to play Destiny and play. It yeah. wasn't on the same timeline. And that's. It just happened like that. I met this man and I said immediately I felt like he could be my husband when we started dating. He felt the same thing. I'll be real. Once I've, I've heard the situation, to me, it's not bad. You know, I tell Destin, like, you know, I'm neutral on it, you know, and y'all didn't work out. Yeah. People don't work out. Oh, wait yeah. a minute, Martel. You, you're neutral, so you're not picking sides. <laughs> I heard both sides. So it, it's like like right now, I sound neutral. But if Moses started doing anything toward Destiny, I'm wrong with Destiny all day. I understand she's in her emotions about the situation. Yeah. Do, you, do you blame her? Okay, so then you know the clips are on like a loop on Instagram. But um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, we see where Sunny says, I get it if she has feelings, but the disrespect is something different. And Martel starts off by saying, you know, do you blame her? But then, you know, when as they're talking to Martel, he's like, you know, I feel like um, the two of them didn't make it. The two of you fell in love. I'm, I'm neutral. I don't have a beef with you and Moses. And then Chris is like, oh, so Martel, you're neutral. And then Martel tried to uh, switch it up and say, yeah, but if they do anything to Destiny, I'm riding with Destiny. F that. Oh, Martel, you got caught out and you are quite the hypocrite. It's okay for you to be neutral. You don't want to be at odds with Sonny and Moses just because Moses and Destiny broke up their 15 year on again, off again, F around situationship. So it's okay for you to be neutral and protect your peace and get along with everyone as much as you can. But when it comes to Melody, you expect her friends to just turn on her and be blindly loyal to you. He thinks that the world revolves around him. But kudos to Chris Fletcher for being swift on his feet and calling Martel out and right in the moment on his hypocritical neutrality towards Sonny and Moses. That was good. And then we also saw um, in another upcoming clip where Nell is going to ask Chris if it would be a conflict of interest for him to show properties to Sonny and Moses. And a lot of us said, absolutely not. Business is business. Some of you all commented that you felt like the conflict of interest was not so much their friendship with Destiny, but the fact that 
you know, it's rumored that Destiny may be sort of kind of doing something with Lance or dating Lance. Um, I have a feeling if they were dating, it would be super duper more recent versus the timing of when they filmed that scene. And then also Lance just seems like he's he's probably dating multiple people. And so his destiny is probably not anything serious. And I would imagine that the parents would not be up in their dating business like that to even know and to even suggest that that's the conflict of interest. I personally think that they were just solely thinking because they're friends or friendly with destiny. Nell thought that that could be a conflict of interest. The way Nell's brain cells come together and come up with stuff, I just do not understand what's going on inside that brain of hers at all. But in my opinion, this is totally not a conflict of interest. But um, what did you all think of these topics? Um, if, if you put yourself in Uncle Ellis's shoes, do you totally understand why he made that video? I know that he was cursing, but I curse sometimes. I am not perfect. I'm in no position to judge Mr. Dawson. Um, I'm glad that he got the feelings off of his chest. I know that he's very hurt about Kiki no longer being with us. Um, do you think that Wanda, Marceau, and Tisha will respect the boundaries and not show up to the funeral? And Stormy's live, does it explain a lot? Do you think that season seven is her last season? I have a feeling that it is. And what did you think about Chris calling out Martel? Martel definitely will make excuses for himself. I'm sure Chris calling out his hypocritical neutrality will not even penetrate his brain because he convinces himself that however he feels, whatever his stance is correct. But I thank you all so much for checking out this video. I always appreciate the support. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. Happy Friday. We made it. Um, and now it's the weekend. It's going to be great. And we'll see if I, I was thinking about going to the beach this weekend. I just keep thinking because I'm off a couple days next week. It will be better to go during the week. It'll be like fewer people. I just feel like on the weekends, the beach will be packed and then I can make some cool videos and, you know, journal and read by the water. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But I think I'm going to wait until next week. But I will talk with you all soon. Bye.